Hello, I'm Vijay Karana. Welcome to My Australia, the show about people from overseas having Australian experiences. Coming up on today's show, David swims with crocodiles, Jayshree visits a nature park, and Priya goes sailing in Australia's capital, Canberra. One of Australia's most dangerous animals is the crocodile. But David is about to meet some crocs and he isn't scared at all. In fact, he wants to get in the water with them. Let's see how he does it. My name is David Diarouzu. I was born in Dili, East Timor, which is the capital of East Timor. We came to Australia because I was awarded Australian Development Scholarship to pursue my tertiary degree doing Bachelor of Humanitarian and Community Studies. I always consider my family as what motivates me in life and what is really important. It's sometimes I find very difficult to be who I am now because, because I'm not only a student. Is it lemonade for a dream, mate? Um, I work part time. I have to manage my time to spend with my family, which is not always easy. How are you going today? The cost of living, especially in the Northern Territory, is very expensive. We share with my cousins, three of them, so there are seven of us living in the house. So we share the cost, we share the household responsibilities. So that makes things a lot easier. Have you cooked it? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I appreciate about living in Australia is the fact that people appreciate that differences do exist when it comes to race, culture, um, re religion difference sexual identity and those sort of things. So people are very tolerant. Especially in Darwin, people are very friendly. There it is, Crocosaurus. I'm at Crocosaurus Cove. I brought my friend, he's a very good friend of mine. Craig's the name, he's uh, one of my uni mates. Oh, look at that monster croc. I think we'll be holding some baby crocodiles to start with and go in the case of death. That is huge. Yeah. Is this glass magnifying this? <laughs> I think he would be a perfect person to come with me in the case, in case if I'm die, he will also die. <laughs> you don't want to cook that. Where's his other arm? Oh, I think he's actually lost his other arm completely. Got a bit of mixed feeling. Excited, um, nervous. So, who wants to go first? I have a bit of fear of touching crocodiles, but if it's secure, then I'll just give it a go. One hand goes around his tail, and your other with you thumb nice and tight on his head there. First, I thought, oh, I didn't want to do it. Big smile up here, and one more. But thank God I didn't, and it feels so soft and smooth. Cute animal. Mm, he's pretty cool. In Timor, we don't, we don't have these facilities that actually allows us to go any near them. Uh, we do have crocodiles, but they're out in the wild, and they're pretty dangerous, so. You don't want to be eaten. <laughs> OK, everyone, just remember to keep your hands down. It's very embarrassing to catch footage of camera if you lose your hand. Yes. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Look at the baby ones. Yeah. Be patient. Oops, sorry. Hey, look at that. Touching. That's cool. It's like it's almost his standing with his tail. I, just, I said to myself, I just want to step out of my comfort zone and do something different and do something that is a bit challenged. I'm glad that I did it. Ooh, look at that. And drop it down. See how he's got our eyes on either side of his head? Yeah. Choose the side of his head and drop it down, tap it in the water beside his head, just near his eye. Well, I've never fed a big crocs before, and as you could see, it's enormous. He's not interested. Yeah, look at him. See that tail? Yeah. He's trying to play games so with it. Go, Chopper. Yay! <laughs> My family thinks that I'm a little bit crazy doing this, but I just want to do something different um, in my life. While I have the um, opportunity to do that, why not? We'll read through the paper. It's going to tell you all the reasons you should never step foot inside that cage. Flip it over. <laughs> sign your life away down here. I was nervous, for sure, to be honest, when, before we went down the water. This is what they call the cage of death. I mean, you can actually see through the perplex underneath you, and so I guess I sort of thought, what would happen if that broke? Can you drop out in the water? Because then there's nothing. 
but um, well, you realise how sturdy the cage is. Um, you feel a bit safer. I thought it was going to be hard, but after we're in the water for a while, I sort of get used to it, and that comes the fun part. Okay, three, two, one. I knew it was already big, so there was no surprises once we were in the water. That was supposed to be the second largest crocodile in captivity. It had an enormous jaw, an enormous body that could possibly fit two or three humans, uh, full-sized humans. I think that actually adds to the adrenaline because you know that you're getting the water with a giant crocodile. Well, what we were trying to do down there was um, we tried to get their attention and see if they could come um, any closer to us. Oh, we were told that if we splashed the water and created vibrations, that might work. I was watching Dave next to me going, oh, bang, 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 I want to come, come. And I'm sort of, calm down, Dave. They're right. They're happy. We like them happy. We didn't get that much uh, reaction from the crocs, but Craig and I had fun down there. They'd just been fed, so I suppose they were quite happy just to sit and watch us make, well, we kind of made deals of ourselves, didn't we? So they got the show. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. What I did today um, was risky, very risky. Um, but as, as I already did it, I thought I would become more a risk taker. And as I grow older, I'll just go out there and have fun. Uh, just go and face the talent, I think. It's probably one of the best experiences I ever had in my life. Swimming that close to one of the biggest creatures on Earth. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. David there, getting a bit closer than I would to some crocodiles. Australia has a lot of nature parks, which are a great way to enjoy our environment. Our next guest is about to visit one, but first, let's find out what people here think about getting back to nature. Uh, I think it's really good to get out and be sort of alone or with a small group of people and just explore that peace and that we have in Outback. It's fun to get outdoors and, I don't know, I guess it's just a change really from normal life. I just like uh, to go for walks and I like stepping on grass. There's a lot of nature in the city, which is nice. I like seeing the combination between the city and nature. I like all the extremes. Um, I like the coast uh, to the interior and the desert and the rugged in between. We went to the Simpson Desert. Uh, it was really amazing. Um, so when, especially when you're traveling across where there's an area of just nothing and then all of a sudden you come across a pocket just full of wildlife and you know, greens and flowing water, which you'd never expect. Just get out of the, I guess, rat race a bit. I, um, just being able to relax. Um, and always just seeing family and everything going back to the country, that's what I just always think about. The air is fresh yeah, and, it's and it's very beautiful and sometimes you just want to escape from your study, just have a break. Yeah, I, I love, you know, trees and um, something very soothing about it, I think, something very calming. I just like how in Australia it's still quite rural. That's what I like. I like going to places that seem fairly, fairly rural, the way they're supposed to be rather than um, inhabited. I've been actually in my country live uh, in a small uh, um, desert, you know. So I was like living with uh, the animals, and, like a farmer life, you know. And then I moved to the city. So if you ask me about the what is best or what sh which is better, I think to live out of the city is better. Because we are we are nature, we're one with the earth. So it's important to realize that and to spend time actually getting back to your roots. Now let's join Jayshree as she heads to a nature park. My name is Jayshree Pillay, and my friends call me Jesh. Born in Singapore. My parents are Singaporeans, my grandparents are Singaporeans. I've been living in Melbourne, Australia for one year now. I'm studying my double masters at La Trobe University, the Bandura campus. I'm doing my masters in professional accounting and masters in financial analysis. I've heard people say that um, Australians have a very relaxed lifestyle and that was what I was looking forward to. 
apart from uni, I actually like to take photos. It takes my mind off a lot of things. So I would actually take long walks um, at my uni's wildlife sanctuary. And if I'm lucky on good days, I get to spot the animals there. So we went one, right? One, two, three. Come up, strike. I enjoy doing karate, which I just took up recently, and that gives me um, a lot of space to actually vent out my frustrations. Compared to how I was a year back, I would say that I've learned to be more sensitive, more tolerant, more giving. Oh, I've learned cooking as well, <laughs> very important. I've learned to be, I would say, even more confident, so coming here has pushed me out of my comfort zone and I'm glad I did it. Hi guys! I'm good. I'm at the okay, Phillip Island Nature Park and I'm looking forward to um, do some nest building for the penguins and some <laughs> nursery work. And of course, I'm going to get my hands dirty. Uh, that's going to be exciting because I've got long nails. I don't know how that's going to work. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually very excited. Propagating these to build penguin habitat. Oh, okay. These are all penguin friendly plants that we put um, throughout their colony. Okay. So they can live under them quite happily. My mum is an animal lover, so I've got that from her. She has always exposed myself and my brother to animals from a very young age. And I used to volunteer at the Singapore Zoo. So I always wanted to be a vet. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, my dad advised me to be in the finance line. It's not that I hate it, but um, if given a choice, I would definitely switch fields and, and be a vet. So experiences like this um, gives me the opportunity to explore my passion, my love for the animals. And so I really, really treasure this kind of experiences. So this penguin here is a taxidermy penguin. So okay. it was once alive, but unfortunately from a sad story or natural means, it actually has uh, died okay. and we have got it taxidermed. Yeah. We see where the penguins cross the line. So okay. The penguins at the moment are either in the forest okay. or the outer sea. It's interesting to know that every night about a thousand to two thousand penguins come in and actually go find their homes okay. on this island. This is the artificial penguin burrow that we're going to make today. Okay. Uh, it will be the home for our penguins and we'll go put it into one of the sites. Is it going in? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit more muscle. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Well done. Woo! Here you go. Really <sighs> That's good. hard work. Okay. So I was told that uh, two penguins can live in that nest and uh, if they have chicks it's comfortable for a family of four to live in there. So um, that's my part of giving to the penguins. Instead of donating money, um, doing something like this actually allows a penguin to have a home safe from all the predators. I've never seen a koala before. I've only seen them on TV, in the documentaries, or uh, on posters. What we're doing this afternoon is joining this group of um, volunteers okay. and uh, we're planting uh, this area inside the boardwalk. The Koala Conservation Centre, which is where we are, is part of Phillip Island Nature Park. The Koala Conservation Centre itself is, uh, is here because on the other side of the fence that you might be able to see in the distance, mm -hmm. um, that's Phillip Island, uh, okay. where there is a, a declining population of koalas. Okay. Probably less than 40 koalas on the whole island at the moment. Okay. Uh, outside of those at the Koala Conservation Centre, and our population is about 35 at the moment. So okay. in, our, in this small area of the park, because we've got that fence around yep. our habitat, we can create safe habitat for the koalas. Okay. On the other side, life's much tougher for them. I've got a question. Does the koalas... Is it a hard question or an easy question? Because I'm shopping at hard <laughs> That depends. I'm sure you have the answers. Oh, I'm scared <laughs> Go on. So does the koalas go down? Like, they do they, to, yeah. if they need to? The koalas live off a tree because that's a safe place to be. Okay. So if you're a koala, sensibly you're up there, uh, that's where you find your food. Right. They get most of their moisture out of the leaves that they eat. And okay. um, 
and they're safe from their predators, which are big carnivores. Okay. Uh, and the big carnivores around here are people and dogs. So I've just spotted my first koala, and I was told that it's a female one. And how do you differentiate is actually by looking at their nose. Um, the male ones have a, sh a sharper nose, and this one, it's not, this one's nose is not that sharp, so I presume it's a female. You can so. keep asking questions because once you stop, we've got to go down and work. Okay, so I guess let's get going. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, <up>. let's work. <laughs> I've learned that um, apart from the city life that I've seen in Melbourne, um, there's the, the very quiet, I wouldn't say countryside, um, but the other side of the Australian life would be what I experience today. Easy as that. <laughs> Like most volunteers we have here, Jay has got onto the, um, the job pretty readily and that's because she wanted to be here. And hopefully what she takes away from it is what we take away every day and that's making a small difference. That's what we're doing here today, just changing the, um, the balance of habitat in favour of the native creatures and thankfully she's been part of that and hopefully uh, she'll take away the, that warm fuzzy feeling that we get from doing that. <laughs> I've also learned that um, it's not all about money. The Australians actually get down and dirty to do the work, to get the money in. Um, they don't complain whether they have government funding or not. They actually go out there and um, spread the conservation message. They get volunteers in to do the work and they generate the revenue. And that keeps these parks going and that's fantastic work. That's Jay Shree getting involved with some of our unique wildlife. Now, I love sailing. When it's windy, it's exhilarating, and when there's no wind, it can be peaceful and relaxing. Priya has never done it before, so let's see how she goes. Hi, I'm Priya Shinilata. You can call me Priya. I'm from Ba, that's a village in Fiji. In my family, I have my parents and I have my younger brother and my younger sister, so I'm the eldest. I grew up on a farm playing with chickens and cows and horses. As a child, I would say I was very naughty and I was very inquisitive. I was awarded uh, OZAID scholarship uh, to do Bachelor of Arts in International Studies here in Canberra. I'm on an internship program with the Fiji High Commission. So I'm trying to juggle my studies and internship and work. So it's all fun <laughs> at the moment. I live in a flat with my friend and I go for part-time work that's on weekends and Friday nights, of course. I think in Fiji we are much more socialist. We love bonding and being together. Whereas here is much more individualistic. Um, I don't even know my next door neighbor. Whereas in Fiji, I know the whole village. <laughs> so. Back in Fiji, I taught for four years, so as, as a teacher, I was very nice and proper and I couldn't do anything that was out of line. My personal goal was to liberate myself more. My English has improved a lot and um, I'm doing things that I didn't think I would be able to do. I'm driving here, so it was another achievement, so really happy. Coming here, I, I really got my wings. <gasps> it will sound a bit ironical. I come from Fiji, surrounded with water, but I don't know how to swim. So, of course, I have never done sailing before. Um, I haven't actually been on a small boat. I'm also a bit scared if it topples over. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm Priya. Hi, I'm Hamish. So you're here to try sailing and find out what it's like? Yes, hoping. Good, Good. OK. First rule of seamanship, avoid collisions. If it looks like you're going to collide with another boat, go elsewhere. And that leads us into our safety roof. The closest a boat can sail to the wind is 45 degrees. We'll practice on land before we go out and then we'll practice it on the water. I'm uh, feeling a bit excited as well as a bit nervous seeing the water and everything. It says, oh my God, I wish I knew how to swim. <laughs> Next thing is to fit you with your PFD. So try that one. Yep, that's fine. Just swing it around this way. OK. That's it. You make a face, 
strangle them and you poke them in the eye. Okay? So you have a go at it. Okay. Face. Face. Strangle, strangle it. it. And poke them in the eye. Poke them in the eye. Yay. And you'll never forget that story. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, keep on hoisting. Okay, pull a bit harder now, but pull hard, <laughs> pull hard. This is the rudder. You can see how I swing that from side to side. And so what we'll do now is we'll take us up onto a level spot there and I will show you the tacking manoeuvre. Okay. Tacking. Okay, push, push both hands across the boat. Yeah, both hands across the boat. That's it, and your other hand. Uh, through there, yeah, and then put your head down and follow them. Now, that's it. That hand, just keep uh, I've been yeah, learning the manoeuvring skills, which right are pretty in. technical, I guess, with so many different names for all the parts of the boat, which I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Grab the rope where it comes out of a pulley, let go of the rope and flick that over. Yeah, you normally flick it over and just grab it with your other hand while you're changing it, so you know. Oh, okay. Now I'm feeling very excited that, you know, I'm finally going to go on the water. So I just want to go there and get it over with at the moment, yes. See how it's tipping? So, you, yeah, oh. yeah, just, just get your body and get your weight right into the middle. Is, get your fat, so I want you to go down to the back and put the rudder half down. Yeah. Move across the way from me now. OK, and then centre board. OK, you can put that foot over there too. I always wondered how they, because uh, you watch the yacht sail thing, and I would say, how do they do this? Like, why do you have to jump here and there? And Yeah, ready to tack, swap my feet around. Okay. Tacking, push it away like that. Okay. There is a little bit of wind coming from that direction, so yeah. Now we're headed to wind. Now you bring the jib across on the other side. So just let it go and pull on the other side. That's it, and I move into the middle. Okay. And then you move right across, and I straighten up. Okay. Okay. That was really good. <laughs> no, it was. You you and you anticipated the moves really yeah. really well. Okay. And I'd actually like to see you carry on sailing because you've got the right instincts. <laughs> Thanks. No, was, some people do and some people don't. I'm just happy I got the opportunity. So, one thing off my list, <laughs> check. <laughs> so we are sailing, but very, very slowly. Okay, so. Ready to tag. Ready. And when you say push the tiller away from you, when you say. Okay. Tagging. Yeah, just stay in the middle, stay in the middle, watch for sail. Oh. Watch for sail, watch for sail, you're a bit quick, okay? Because okay. the sail needs to come up. See how the sail's now blowing across this side? Yeah. You shouldn't have sat down until it's there. Oh. Turn a little bit more. I would say, apart from getting my shoes wet down. and getting a couple of booms on my forehead, <laughs> it was a pretty good experience. And uh, just a bit of shame that we didn't have much wind, but otherwise it was such a gentle sail. I really, really loved it. Okay, hey, boats head to wind, sails across, straighten up. Okay. I really enjoyed it, and it's, it's always good when you've got somebody who's really catching on quick. It always makes it more fun. Back home, I think no one would have expected me that I'll go on sailing like this, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they will say after watching me do this. They might just go, say, oh, yeah, go, girl. <laughs> yeah, because I think I'll be the first girl from my family to go about sailing like this. So, yeah, big achievement for me. <laughs> Priya there, enjoying the gentle winds of Australia's capital, Canberra. That's all for this episode of My Australia. Here's what's coming up next time. Jay zips through the treetops of a rainforest, Natsumi goes kayaking, and Solome explores the art of belly dancing. See you then. <laughs>